Happy rails to you. Welcome back, my friends. Happy rails to you. It's good to see you again. Thanks for watching the channel and the videos. Sometimes they go real fast and sometimes they're slow. Happy rails to you. Glad you're watching. Well, hello, everybody. It's G Man, My World 67. Good to see you all again. Hey, I was just sitting here contemplating, working on um, one of the engines that I dug out recently uh, over this past weekend. Um, it's a uh, FA uh, number 1065 Union Pacific. I'll show it to you. Um, this got reburied back in the boxes all over again, and it is a really nice looking shell. Uh, it's almost perfect. Um, but as you can see, it has some rust problems, and that's because it was sitting up to here in water uh, during the flood. And it was sitting on top of an 18 inch box. So, most of the uh, as you can see, I don't know what happened to our lighting. But anyway, maybe that help. So it's pretty, pretty rusty. Most of it's surface rust, um, but the engine did get wet just not even halfway up the wheels, I don't think. Although it is... frozen solid. These I can turn just a little bit. Oh, they're turning pretty good now. But I haven't oiled it. I hadn't done anything to it. Sitting here contemplating working on it. I think I'm going to go ahead and start work on it. Uh, I'm going to clean the wheels. Uh, and of course, we're going to tear it apart and then we're going to look on the inside and we're going to uh, tear it down and clean the motor. And uh, all it and lubricate it and see what happens with it. Okay, so here we go. And give me some new screwdrivers. Um, this one's slightly bent. I tried to straighten it out, but I couldn't get it perfectly straight. I've ended up over the years using them for other things periodically. And I try to maintain just purposely using them for... Aha! Uh -huh. Someone has put an extra weight in here. I'll show it to you. At some time or another. Now, this is the first time I've ever had this engine open. And I've probably had this engine five or six years. Believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever opened it. It ran great. Uh, it was a really good engine. So I had never had any reason outside of to service it to open it but it's been packed away in a box for 
I don't know, three years. I think I got it out the year of the flood, and that's the year it got wet and dried it out and put it back in the box. So. Wonder if it's magnetic. Nope, it's not a magnet. Not magnetized. But I was wondering, I I didn't remember this having these two holes drilled in the top here. And I saw this little wire and I was like, what is that? And why is it there? Now I know. Hmm. Kind of a neat deal. All right. Set that shell over there out of the way. Now looking down at this motor, I'm gonna change the camera. You would never believe that um, this motor was ever wet. See the top of the frame, uh, the, the, the motor and wheel frame is um, still looking good down there. Um, so the water never got above that. except looks like possibly on this end and you can see here how rusty those front wheels are and looking at it everything looks pretty good So let's clean the wheels and try some of the penetrating oil on it before we go any further. Get my can of... Sorry about that. This is one of those days when the camera wants to do what it wants to do. And you're almost prone to let it do it. <clears throat> well, guys. Looks like cold weather is setting in in most states and and has set in. And so it looks like cold weather is upon us. And uh, it's not super, super cold here today, but it is in the 40s, mid 40s. We'll just put a little penetrating oil on here and make sure we get it soaked up pretty good. I'll leave it turned upside down. I didn't put a lot, but I did do almost everything except those front wheels and let me do them while I'm doing it, even though they're turning. They've got to be clean and serviced anyway, so let's just go ahead and get them.
those rollers too. let that set just a few minutes and we'll be back okay guys we're back and uh, <clears throat> I've been wiping off the excess lube and uh, it actually as I wiped it off where it got it onto the frame it actually started taking off the rust so I don't know if you can see that or not. I actually started taking off the rust. So I'll probably have to clean it up some more. But uh, it doesn't look quite as rusty as it did, at least on this top side. The wheels uh, also uh, these three this one didn't get much on it so it didn't uh, there's a little bit there. So uh, that'll kind of help in the cleaning of the wheels. <clears throat> also. Okay. This is the original bulb. Now, theoretically, uh, I kind of the motor is kind of free now. A little bit. So let's see. I went ahead and oiled it. So let's see what happens. Oh. We first must have power before we can uh, disperse it, huh? Okay. Here we go. And nothing. Good as a door. Okay, so next we're going to uh, clean the wheels and uh, clean the rollers and get our little meter out and we'll check well, not the meter, but we'll use the light, the probe light, and we'll check it and see what uh, see what's going on. All right.
wire <coughs> wheel was coming out. It gotten loose. Uh, now, got these front wheels fairly clean in there, actually spinning freely. So the WD did its job. We cleaned the rollers. Uh, cleaned the rollers while I was at it. And the uh, roller carriers. And these rear wheels, until I can get these wheels to turn, uh, which I believe I, I can turn them with the... Uh, now because they were a little freer than they were yeah <coughs> so if i can turn these get this tightened back up Guys, please wear your glasses. I can't stress that enough. If you happen to be using something like this, um, a little motor tool or a miniature drill, whatever it is that you're using, wear your glasses. Um, save your eyesight. Um, as I use this little wire wheel, and it's one of the cheaper wheels. It's not one of the better wheels you can get. and uh, But it... Uh, little pieces break off and flake off of it and they go everywhere so uh, they're real small but they're and they're tiny but they're they're big enough to damage your eyesight so um, be careful it's kind of like a Brillo soap pad you know uh, once it starts breaking up okay so we still don't have the whole wheels clean but let's see what we what we're working with now. Best made any difference. <clears throat> Should be some difference. If nothing else, if that bulb is good, it looks good. Uh, I didn't take it out. But looking down at it, it looks good. And still we have, there we go, there we go. There we go. unit and 
I'm going to move the camera back up here. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Oh, we put the camera over here. Will it run? The answer is yes. Even though it has been uh, submerged in water for a period of time, it was probably like that for about two weeks before we actually got back in to my shop. I'd say 10 to 14 days. I've did videos on ones that were submerged longer and worse than this. I didn't really know how bad this was. It looked like it was going to be worse, a lot worse than, than what it actually is. How about that? Look at that. All right, so what I'm going to do now real quickly I hadn't done it yet I'm gonna spray some alcohol down in around the uh, the armature Just for the purpose of getting it a little cleaner while it's in operation. Spray a little bit down around those brush plates too. You'll be amazed what the difference what difference it makes. Whoops, get on the track. See what I mean? That's running about 80. Let it run a little more and it should pick up. Now, I don't know when the last time this was lubed, so 
Boy, and that armature is really clean now. It really looks good. Shiny. Uh, I don't know when this, the last time this was lubed, so I'm going to drop another drop of oil. Down on it. Put a little more oil in the filler. So it won't take off completely by itself till I get up around 35. But keep in mind the wheels are still dirty and this track is probably dirty too again now. But anyway, will it run? The answer is yes. So, in case you haven't seen uh, any of my past videos on submerged uh, motors that have been submerged underwater, unless they've been in salt water for long, long periods of time and the plates are bad, uh, things of that nature, uh, usually you can take one that is badly damaged, way worse than this, and just uh, clean it up real good, oil it, put new brushes in, or even sometimes clean the old brushes. Make sure they're flat uh, when you put them in. Clean that armature up real good, and make sure all your connections are good. Get your wheels clean. That motor should run, even though it's been submerged. Um, this one, like I say, wasn't really that bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. When you look at it, it just looked like, wow, everything was covered with rust. Except for the top half of the motor, which was a good thing. That lets you know that water didn't get all the way up into the head uh, of the motor. Um, which, which was, like I say, a good thing. This, um, I wish I could show you this armature. Let's see. Well, you see, um, there it is. And it still looks uh, a little rusty. A little dirty. Um, and I'll probably go ahead and clean that up. But it's a lot cleaner than it was when we first started. Trust me. And it will clean itself up some more, but we're going to go ahead and clean it up. You can see some water had gotten in around here. So the water did get up to here. At least. Well, all right, guys. I'm going to make this a two-part video because this has gone kind of long already. Um, we know uh, we got it up. We got it running. I'm going to clean those wheels. Uh, some more and uh, clean the armature and break it down, check everything out on it, re oil it, and uh, bring it back and we'll see how it goes. I'll, I've got to clean up this knuckle coupler, lubricate it a little bit. 
this is going to make uh, a really uh, nice engine. I was afraid that I was going to have to put another motor in it or uh, totally overhaul it. And it's not the case. So, got my engine back. And it's going to be up and going here in a little bit. And that makes for a good, uh, happy rails. So as I always say, if you enjoy working on your trains, um, rebuilding them, refurbishing them, restoring them, or just plain fixing them, repainting them, body work, working on your layout, whatever it is, guys, you should have happy rails. That's all I have for you in this video segment. Um, this We'll call this segment one. Be looking for a short take in segment, segment two. That's all for now. Bye-bye.